in Vancouver. Uh, with COVID, one of the neat things that we've been doing is we've been serving more clients across Canada and also down in the States. Uh, so we were able to, uh, we're working right now <laughs> on our first person who is going to move from Vancouver uh, to Ontario for a job. We're super, super excited for that. Let Melissa in there. Um, so that's a little bit of background on us. Uh, we've been digital forever, so the COVID switch was actually pretty easy for us uh, and actually a pretty positive uh, move so far in terms of the business side. So we're trying to make sure that we're out here supporting the folks uh, who are, are looking for work at the time of Canada's highest unemployment uh, for anyone who's alive. <laughs> no one's ever seen anything uh, quite as bad as this, so hang in there if, uh, if you're looking. Uh, Sam Scott, the nicest man in the world. Uh, he is uh, from Chroma Systems. He's an AV consultant, has been for a long time. He's worked on big, big projects. He's worked on projects you know. Right now he's working on BC Place, which is super cool. And I love that. Uh, when I was telling him about this, I said, I just got a ring light. Look, I turned it off. I turned it on. And he said, that's so, it's so not everything. Isn't it? It's a nice, as long as you're smiling. Uh, you're you're in the right place, but yes, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about some of the actual theoretical stuff behind how this communication can be structured. And a heads up, it's more than just ring lights. <laughs> Take it away, Mr. Sam Scott. Sure, thanks, Stephen. Um, you guys hear and see me, okay? So yeah. Um... Looks like a um, uh, small group today, so that's good. I, I sort of want to just keep this pretty conversational. I don't want to like blast you with with more PowerPoint than, than you need. And uh, thanks for coming out um, at this time of night uh, after after a whole work day. I really appreciate it. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, driving effective collaboration in the work from home era and just kind of how organizations have responded and how you might uh, your workplace might uh, might be responding um, to this era. Um, if you want to jump into the conversation, just unmute yourself and ask a question. I'm going to be going through my slides, but please just just feel free to jump in. Um, I, I have no, I don't need to stick to stick to a script here, so I'm just happy to kind of answer questions and, and talk it through. Does that sound good? Yep. Sounds That's great. Up. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So yeah, like like Stephen says, I'm a I'm an AV consultant. I help organizations uh, uh, plan, uh, design, and and execute AV projects. Um, um, had many education, corporate, and public clients over the years. I've been a um, in AV my whole career, and I've been a consultant for about uh, ten of those years. So so um, that's who I am. So I'm going to be talking about yeah how how organizations are responding to to the way working has been for the last six months, um, you know what uh, how how you sort of devise a solution that makes sense for your workplace. Uh, then I'm going to give you four really simple tips for for better better video conferencing, um, just like really simple takeaways that you can implement right now that don't uh, involve you buying a lot of equipment. Um, and then maybe some examples of different different office configurations or or tools that uh, that'll work for you. So um, companies kind of fall into three categories um, that uh, when when the pandemic hit six months ago, uh, one you were like talent marketplaces offices. You were a, a remote first organization already. You you. You, your company is is natively distributed, and uh, you didn't have a physical office. You had uh, tools and and workflows uh, that were remote. In which case, uh, you're laughing. Uh, you um, you know you you're set to go. Uh, you you ha this didn't affect uh, the way you uh, work very much this pandemic, and uh, and you're in a good position. So this presentation isn't uh, isn't strictly for for those those companies. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be talking about those that fall sort of somewhere in between these two. So anyway, option two is is your strictly nine to five office. So your more traditional office, uh, nine to five um, um, cubicle based or or desk based office. Um, and you know, there's a lot of organizations out there that are just sort of have you know when everyone was sort of forced home, they they you know grit their teeth and 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 are just bearing it. They're they're not putting any work into um, into making it easy for people to work from home. Uh, they're not investing in any tools. Um, you know, you're just organizations that are just basically pretending that everyone's in their office, but their office happens to be at a seat in their house. Um, and 
and are just kind of counting the days until everyone can come back full time. Um, if, if that describes your office and and you're a type of manager that's um, that's not looking to sort of take advantage of 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 the situation that we're in, then again, this presentation is not really for you. Um, but most organizations are are somewhere in between a remote first workplace and an office based workplace. They they have an office. People are have had been sent home. Now they're finding ways to do business. You know. Uh, safely, uh, and they're and they're falling somewhere in between. Um, so I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about number three, the 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 hybrid office, which is which is what's sort of taking shape around uh, that I'm seeing my clients and the people that I work with. So talk about pros and cons of of remote working. Um, so remote working is great for for a lot of reasons, and I, I'm sure Talent Marketplace, you folks have experienced this. That, that you can access um, if if you don't have a geographical restriction on where you hire talent from, you can hire talent um, with very few locational constraints. You you can find the the best and brightest uh, literally anywhere in the world, and and slot them into your to your workforce, and that's a huge that's a huge bonus. And again, traditional companies now that had had not really done this are now are now considering this uh, as a way of working. Now that they're, it doesn't matter whether their staff lives in Burnaby or you know um, lives in Texas. Then they, they can go out and, and start incorporating people far and wide in, into their companies. Um, and and you know by doing that they can adopt innovative processes to to boost productivity. So again you know uh, tools and techniques, um, and, and, you know to to uh, to work better. You know one thing that this this big work from home experiment has. Um, has really shown is is it's given organizations you know traditional kind of calcified organizations a chance to um to rethink some of the ways they they work you know pandemic or not it, it's kind of disrupting the the way that people are 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 getting work done and and there's a tremendous opportunity there you know and then another another really positive uh about about remote working is that it significantly reduces real estate costs for for organizations. They can reduce office space, and uh, they don't have to. They don't need to feel the pressure to uh, occupy expensive downtown real estate. Um, so again, for for management, that's a great bonus. But um, uh, there's also are, are some real downsides to to remote working. Um, you know, and and you know, my industry um, that you know, sells and, and promotes um, a lot of remote working tools. I feel sometimes kind of blind to, to some of these these downsides of remote working. Um, you know, one of them is that remote working uh, can can blend your um, your work identity and your home identity together in a way that um, uh, that you may not want um, like this guy. Um, it, it your your work is literally spread out all over your home, and your your home is your workplace, and it's really difficult to to separate separate those two things, you know. And and you know, as we've seen this, we've probably all been in a video call where someone's like jo dog jumped up on somebody's lap, and it was just like a fun interruption, and we all thought it was thought it was really cute, and you know that that's funny, but but uh, this 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 separation of of home stress and work stress can can lead to real burnout, uh, can lead to an inability to um, sort of t turn off your work stress and and can lead to a feeling of sort of being trapped. Um, remote working also assumes that everyone has a good a good or functional home office. You know, I see some of you on the call here working from your kitchen tables. Um, maybe you're working from your bedrooms. Again, this uh, I saw this this tweet today with a woman being uh, interviewed on CNN, and then after her interview, she she showed this. Um, this uh, this photo of of her interview station. You can see her laptop sitting up there on her um, on her chair, no pants on, kids' toys all over the living room. You know, those of us that live again in the city where we don't have a lot of extra space, this is just the reality of of trying to make uh, your your Zoom calls look good uh, and and your space look professional. Um, you know, and it's funny for a while, but it but it can get kind of stressful. Um, and it also assumes that parents have reliable school or childcare, which both both of those things are really up in the air right now. Um, you know, um, for example, uh, one of my kids uh, just got sick today at daycare, and if they have anything as much as a runny nose, they have to stay home until they have a a COVID test. So 
you know that means that that one or both of the parents are are at home working while the while the sick kid is there, so they're not allowed back in school. So and, and you know and then the last is that it doesn't fit all personality types. Um, we've a lot of us have probably all all felt this by now that um, that sometimes. Uh, you know, it can be very isolating working from home. So, some people um, and some roles work really well. Uh, you, you know, you're you're at home. You have long periods of solitude um, to concentrate. Maybe you know people that are um, you know coders or programmers, people that are writers. Um, if you're doing like en engineering work or or maybe even some administrators, people that that want to sort of sit and concentrate um, and work in solitude, it works really well for them. But people maybe who are in sales, uh, who, who um, uh, work in marketing or customer service, who are, um, you know, extroverted personalities, uh, this could be really tough for them. Uh, they, they're used to ha having their, their social functions fulfilled at work and, uh, and, and they really thrive in a, in a space, in a social space like that. Um, and then the other big one here is managers. If, as if, if, you know, if you're an effective manager, you're, you're always sensing and paying attention to, to, to your, your employees and your, um, your team and and figuring and trying to keep connected with them and empathize with them and 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 keep a tab on their emotional state and that can be really hard when when they're at home and they're not right there in front of you uh it takes extra work as a manager um when you're working remote to to stay on top of how how your team's feeling um i mean does this does this ring true to some of you do you does anyone else have sort of um anything to weigh in on this i mean that piece on um yeah, the social stuff in the office, like we, we were in a shared space some of the time, right, when we were going in. So we had like 80 people at any given time. And we all yeah. knew some of them at least a little bit. So it was so, so easy to just sit down and like take five minutes. So we're like, hey, man, what's up? And you're just able to chat about whatever's on your mind. Yeah. Um, like now that's just, there's no real outlet for that. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Yeah. Um, and it's it's hard to sort of manufacture virtual spaces to to have that kind of interaction. I find. Yeah, and actually on that, we had uh, one person reach out, and we've we've sent an email out about this, but they uh, proposed basically what you talk about, which is a, a digital space. You just gotta like turn the camera on, um, enter that room whenever you want, work together, chat if you want, and if not, mute people. That's all good. Uh, and I don't know how effective they found that, but yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, there's some really interesting tools coming out in that regard. You know, video conferencing is really has always been uh, for a long time. Video conferencing software is stuck in this this um, paradigm when we're we're all sort of sitting there as a grid of squares, um, just kind of staring at each other awkwardly. Um, but there's a lot of really interesting video conferencing tools coming out um, soon. I've, I've highlighted them in my in my email newsletter in the last couple issues where. Um, you know, people appear as like little floating bubbles uh, within or within your documents and within your operating system. So your coworkers are in, sort of encoded into your into your operating system instead of being the sort of layer or, or separate application. Some really interesting stuff coming out. Anyway, uh, I'll move on. Um, yeah, so anyway, I just really like this tweet because this is like very much me. The other day I, I had a sort of a childcare mix up and I was had a baby in the other room and I like quickly threw on a shirt while I ran my video conference and then had to have to had to mute so that no one could hear the baby crying. But um, it's pretty good background. You wouldn't know it. Yeah, right. I, th I thought she did a really great job here. Um, uh, tossed all the toys over to the side and it's looking like a, a pro on CNN International probably. Anyway, so, so, so what? So you know, there were, what are the results here, here of 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 this kind of uh, you know of of working partly in the office and partly out of the office? Um, you know, if if you're like a lot of organizations right now, so in September, I'm noticing a lot of people are coming back to work in some capacity. Uh, one organization I work with, an architecture firm, uh, they're about, they have a staff of about 40. They're breaking into two, maybe 30 or 40 people. They're breaking into two cohorts of 15, and they're both coming into the office alternately. And and those cohorts will will stay physically distanced at the office, but then then they'll collaborate with the other cohort if they need to. Um, I'm seeing a lot of companies just scramble to get onto Slack or Microsoft Teams. Uh, TMP, what do you guys use? Do you guys use Slack? 
Oh yeah, we love Slack. We were born on Slack. Slack right. and coffee shops. That's how we started. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So, so a lot of organizations who, again, are just not used to kind of instant messaging. Um, I find instant messaging at work is a very generational thing. That um, p people that sort of are slightly older than I am, I find, um, uh, or organizations whose I, I shouldn't say people that are older than me. I should say organizations whose culture is dominated by by an older paradigm have a really hard time. I'm taking up Slack, whereas um, or, or or Teams, but they're just shoehorning it into their workplaces right now because they have to stay in communication. So, you know what what I'm sort of seeing is that the the physical office will will change from from being a place where everyone goes every day to a place that kind of works like a um, like a hub uh, or or headquarters uh, for for people to check in, for people to to do the type of work that needs uh, physical connection. Uh, but it won't. But it will be less and less the type of place that uh, that people need to stick, stay to, stay at nine to five. Um, the work, the home work, will happen at home and happen in the office. Um, but but there'll be more fluidity about what the office is used for and how it's used. Um, you know, and then the second big trend is that organizations um, will adopt remote workflows and tools. Uh, organizations that weren't um, that didn't fall into category one that weren't remote first will start adopting some of those tools and, and techniques. Um, uh, e even some of the more traditional offices uh, will do that. So. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about about some of these these tools and solutions. So so one of the things that I'm seeing a lot, um, you know, a good friend of mine works at at, uh, at UBC, um, and and their office, uh, the, UBC is almost completely remote right now, from what I understand. Um, all her entire staff and office are completely working from home, and it's not something that they've ever done before. So every morning at eight thirty, the boss calls a Zoom call. Uh, one hour Zoom call with um, with a lot of staff. It's, I think it's about like 10 people. At, and then they they just have to sort of grind through. And I think the manager just does that to like make sure everyone's up and 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 staring at the computer screen and 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 clocking in on time. And it, it, it's driving my friend crazy because it doesn't it's not something it's not a time where she gets a lot of work done uh, everyone's struggling to make it on time it's uh, 8 30 is 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 you know in these pandemic times is like it, it's hard it's sort of hard to get all your stuff together by that point and kind of get your work face on by by 8 30. um and, and this is example an example of, of synchronous communication um this this kind of over reliance on on video conferencing and being constantly connected to your coworkers. um so synchronous communication basically includes every form of communication that happens in real time, um, where where responses occur immediately. Um, and then the you know and the other option, the the alternative is asynchronous communication, uh, communication that includes um, every form of every form of communication that uh, doesn't happen in real time, so that responses or or work can happen intermittently. And what I'm seeing is a lot of organizations who are not used to working remotely are are overusing synchronous communications that people are talking about how they're in in zoom calls for hours every day um, they, they feel really glued to their computer or their phone they need to sort of they're at home in their home space but they need to be turned on and and available to their boss or their coworkers at all times and 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 that's that's um, that's incredibly fatiguing uh, to people you know that the reality is that you know, like we talked about in an earlier slide about all the all the ways that working from home can be fatiguing. It's it's hard to switch between work mode and home mode. But when you're at home, you need to you need to respond to things that are happening at home, uh, and and you you need to have a little bit more control over your schedule. So the idea that that everyone just sits in front of their home desk from nine to five is 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 crazy making, and 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 it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna last for long. Um, without people sort of without there being some kind of negative effects in some way. So um, like so some examples of synchronous communications are video calls like we're doing now, um, uh, phone calls, you know, in in person conversations are uh, are of course synchronous, and and then instant messaging or or Slack. So you know, I, I sort of Slack sort of falls into 
is kind of synchronous asynchronous. If you get a, if you get a message on Slack, you can re respond to it later. But again, depending on the culture of your workplace, there there is an expectation to be so like fairly responsive on Slack. Whereas whereas asynchronous communication, um, you know, can be email. Again, some organizations there, there's an expectation that email has to be responded to continuously, which is you know, again, crazy making, um, uh, you know, team communication tools. Do I have Slack in there both? Yeah. So team communication tools can be more, more asynchronous, um, you know, project management tools. So, you know, if you, if you have a more agile or Kanban type, type approach where you have a task, a task oriented, uh, uh, workflows, um, th those are, those are very asynchronous. Um, and then of course, actual working on actual shared documents and, and, you know, in the in-app comments, um, that come with them, which are very effective Google docs and, you know, GitHub, if you're, if you're working in, in code, um, they, they, um, these are the types of tools that, that organizations should be working toward um, too much too much sync uh, can can having people too much uh, synchronized too much can can just be can just be too fatiguing it doesn't represent the reality of working from home um, managers who aren't used to this have to let go a little bit to allow their to allow um, their staff more agency to work on their own time. But by using, by letting people complete um, tasks at, at, at uh, on their own time, or uh, and and communicate through project management tools, or or um, or work on documents on their own time, it it allows people to have a bit of leeway uh, to you know adjust to the reality of working from home, you know, and and then and then again, th there will be always be time when when you need synchronous communications, when you need to have that that in person meeting or that Zoom meeting, and you know that's what the office is for, uh, and if you do have to have meetings. Um, you know, I really urge you to, to make your meetings effective and and make them make them really high quality. Um, you, you know, just just like before the pandemics, meetings can be a colossal waste of time. Um, but but a well organized meeting with good communication tools um, uh, can, and and you know a good decision making workflow and a strong agenda can be can be can be really strong. Again, a lot of those are just sort of cultural things, and they aren't um, they aren't. Uh, they aren't necessarily technology tools, but they go hand in hand. Quick question uh, on that. How yeah. do you, and I'm sure you have to have this conversation a lot. How are you, what kind of things are you saying to managers to really like get that reality across? Like what kind of different tools can they use? Um, <clears throat> or what kind of things do they need to kind of check themselves on so that they can move forward towards more asynchronous communication and be comfortable with it, still have an effective team? Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. It, you know, honestly, like that question ab about about how to move to more asynchronous tools kind of cuts to the heart of of how you are as a manager and 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 how you how you value your employees. Asynchronous tools work a lot better in organizations that that aren't concerned with with paying people by the hour, if I can just be blunt, and more value their employees based on on the uh, on their output and and on their contributions to the to the service or product that that the company provides. Um, it, it involves having a more holistic and long term view of of the value of your people, uh, and and then in turn giving them agency to um, to run. Um, you know, to 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 complete their work when it needs to be complete, uh, so that you don't feel that you need to to micromanage people by by having a tiny square of their face on your screen as much as possible. Uh, it, it, it's, it really cuts down. It really cuts to the to the to the root of of how an organization works, really. Um, and if you're an organization that that always needs to be meeting and always needs to be everyone involved in every one discussion, it, it, it always needs to have everyone involved in every discussion, you you probably not. You, you probably have other problems as an organization, frankly. Um, so, you know that that that's my take on that. An important part of remote working too, Stephen, is is transparency. Be, because not everyone's in the office, and you can, can't literally see what everyone's doing. Having tools where 
that everyone can sort of check in and and kind of see what's happening around them. And, um, uh, you know, and Slack's really good for that. I mean, the, the way you can set up kind of automatic notifications or, or um, you know, if you're using something like um, uh, Google Suite and it will notify you when changes are made in documents that, you, um, that you're working on or again, GitHub in the same way. Like th th those are really helpful because it's sort of an automated way to give everyone involved in a in a project a, a view of, of of what's happening and 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 fights against this feeling of isolation that that working remotely can have. So anyway, um, so in order to make this stuff effective, there's there's sort of a um, sort of three main elements that, that need to happen you know one one of which is 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 the people side of it um you know the executive of an organization has to has to really want uh, a hybrid office to happen um you know specifically i um you know those of you who who speak project management um an executive needs to be the project sponsor and needs to be um uh responsible for the project's success. Um, an executive also has the ability to allocate resources and, and, and make policy about how people work and, uh, and, and allocate uh, time and money to, to making these new technology solutions work. So, so that's really, you know, that, that's a big part of it. And, and to communicate a long-term strategy that, that this is something that we'll be doing for, for a long time. And, and again, I mean, I think it's really hard to know, um, when things are going to be back to normal, but I don't, but, you know, depending on, on one's take on it or what the latest news is, it, it doesn't seem like it's happening. It's going to be a gradual um, change out of this pandemic. So, uh, you know, that's, I think smart organizations are taking that view. Uh, the sec the second uh, element is the environment. Um, so this is how you, you plan your physical office. Um, I'm going to show some examples of, of, of how, how an office can be reorged to, um, to accommodate this type of work. Um, it comes down to individual space design. So taking into account the desks are now socially distant, that um, teams who are at the office need to communicate with teams that are not at the office um, and, and make, make physical space for that is important. Um, so again, that includes, of course, audiovisual technology, but um, there's also lighting and acoustics considerations um, if you're looking to reconfigure your space to, to accommodate this stuff. And then, of course, the technology itself. So the software tools, a lot of which we've talked about, and then the hardware tools to uh, to to allow effective meetings and and uh, remote working and so you know if all of that stuff comes together you you have an organization um all that stuff comes together to an organization who has a, a culture of remote or hybrid work um and again you know if you're if you're lucky like you know talent marketplace you were you were born with that culture and it perpetuates but but ch changing to that culture will, will be hard for some organizations we just have a question here sam um yeah yeah. Have you seen any situations where employers are providing a different level of at-home support to their staff, such as desks, chairs, soundproof booths? And if so, what are the most common things uh, being provided right now? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I know some, I've seen some organizations providing just like an allowance, like, um, like a, uh, just some funds to, to get, uh, to let people, um, uh, buy stuff to, to set up their home office, you know, and again, like if you, if you just literally don't have an, a separate room in your house, there, there's only so much you can do, but, you know, I mean, just, just being able to expense a, a sit stand desk is, 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 is I, I think like a, a very easy investment that a, that a manager can make to, to let people work from home a little bit more easy. Um, you know, really simple stuff like getting a, getting a headset together, um, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know what kind of like if you have a device allowance that in your organization has um, will will give you um, funds in order to in order to um, use your own equipment. I mean, some organizations give people a stipend in order to buy and manage their own equipment at home. And then I'm seeing organizations like mass buy things like headsets or um, or um, conferencing microphones, or um, or better quality webcams. So they will just put in a bulk order and send one to every every one of their uh, staff at home. So everyone is kind of looking and sounding good on on the calls. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Yeah, it did. Thank you. And I also have another question. Obviously, like working at home, 
um, your work life and your home life life can get kind of like mis, um, mixed up together and it can really mess with your head. Like, what do you recommend to uh, separate that? Yeah, I mean, I, I I really, really sympathize with the person who's asking that question because it definitely messes with my head. Um, um, you know, I... So I, I mean, the, some of the advice I'm giving here is 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 solutions for for managers, right? To to, um, um, to ways they can support their staff, and and you know, and that and and you know, my big recommendation is is letting people work, uh, you know, on their own on their own work on their own time in in a more flexible manner. Um, you know, I mean, I, I would like to say go sit in a park and work, um, go, you know, go sit at a cafe, but, it, you know, I don't know, you know, it depends on what the public health recommendations are. But like, if you don't have to be on a Zoom call, then then where you can work can be a lot more flexible. Like you don't, if you can just sit in the backyard, for example, if, if the weather's nice and there's no smoke, you can, uh, you know, you don't need reliable internet. You can just work away on your documents and you don't need to ha have a headset on. Um, the more the more you can sort of get away from being kind of on on the camera, I think is is um, is better for everyone's mental health. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, does anyone else have any suggestions about how they've sort of coped mentally with 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 this having your life, your home life and your work life smashed together? Well, I know myself, I've, I've actually been doing work from home since 1997. Um, so <laughs> a few years doing it, but I always just I think part of it is, especially if you're not living alone, is making sure everybody else in the house understands your, your work hours. And when you're working, you're not there to, you know, get the mail or, you know, do laundry or whatever. Like it's, it's, it's work time, you know, you're not there. And, and so you don't get those interruptions. Um, I know some people like to, you know, when they're going to work, even if it's sitting in their chair, they'll, they'll, you know, wear work clothes to separate their time. Um, and I know for my, my biggest one for me, is when I'm sitting here late working, uh, not right now because I'm looking for to work, but um, I'll, I'll look, I'll sit back for a couple of seconds and go, okay, if I was in the office, would I still be here doing this or would I leave it till tomorrow? <laughs> and just if, it, if it's like, if I, if I would pick up and go home, then pick up and walk out of the office or. Yeah, so. that's, yeah, those are good tips. I know, um, I know for me, like I, I have young kids, and um, so for me, I, I, I can't like work time for me. I can only sort of set aside maybe one or two hours continuously before I have to sort of pop out and and respond. And and again, if I have to be on a Zoom call at a certain time, that's that's really difficult for me. But if, if I'm like, all right, Dad's working for like two hours here, and and can close the door, I can sort of I can sort of manage stretches like that, but just not an entire, you know, eight hours, right? I think it's the same for a lot of people. Sorry, just to go back to the previous conversation, um, Humberto asked, what is your take about Twitter giving remote work options to their employees forever? That was announced this year. And then how did they get to that point as an organization? Yeah, I mean, I, I have seen that and other tech companies do that too. I mean, you know, I mean, what, one thing to remember is that some businesses are more conducive to um, uh to working from home um if you, if you work on computers all day which i'm kind of you know that I'm, I'm kind of a, a lot of my presentation kind of assumes that you do um that that's some, that's something a lot different uh you know and i've talked about the personality types and the and the roles that that are working from home is more conducive but if you're a drywaller you're not working from home you're working at a construction site like it's, it's just important to remember that like this is not you know this is not um this is not for everyone so anyway but back to the question um so how, how did they get to that point i mean you know i mean this this slide kind of shows that umberto like it you, you you need to you need to have executive buy-in which they clearly do um uh you know you need to have as you build out your office or in twitter's case your many offices you need to build them in a way that is is uh, conducive to to remote working and um uh 
you know, and then, and you need to right from the beginning, like right when you onboard your new employees, um, you know, show them the technology stack they'll be using in order to collaborate remotely. Um, so, you know, if the tools are in place and the culture is in place, um, it's an easy thing to do. But if you, you have, you have no tools, you know, you're just emailing, um, Excel spreadsheet version three, version four, you know, back and forth to each other, which again, I'm seeing a lot of in, in organizations are just e still just emailing documents frantically back and forth to each other. Um, you, you, it, it's not, it's not ever going to take. And if, if your managers don't truly believe that it's something that can happen, then it's, it's never, it's never going to happen. But, you know, it, it, I mean, smaller companies should see big, big companies like that, um, uh leading the way in these kind of hybrid offices um uh and should take it as inspiration that you know you can create a lot of value uh and you don't have to be in the office to do it awesome thank you sam yeah um so i see uh, we've got uh, we've got a little bit more time to 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 run through a, a few more slides here so i'll just keep going with it with a few more here and then we can kind of just talk a little bit more. Um, yeah, I just want to show these examples of 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 what what a traditional office space looks like, as opposed to maybe a more more progressive office space. So, if you can see in this diagram, it, it, the the green the green uh, spaces are are private closed offices. The the blue ones are are individual workstations, and the um, and uh, and the yellow one are collaborative spaces, and this is about a twenty-five thousand square foot office um, uh, for reference. So this is what a what a traditional office looks like, where where there's you know sixty-five percent of the space is is individual assigned workstations. Um, you have a few kind of um, corner offices or uh, you know window offices uh, for managers whatever and then and then you have a few a few meeting rooms about 20 percent of your your square uh, square square footage is is collaborative spaces so again if you see some of these there where groups of maybe three or groups of uh, 10 um, can can sit and have a meeting or or uh, or conference with um, you know conference with teams remotely. Um, uh, again, this diagram was obviously made before the pandemic, so everyone's seats are really close together. But you know you can imagine maybe half the occupancy in some of those boardrooms. So this is a this is a really traditional office. There's not a lot of space for for conferencing, and the ones that are have uh, have really um, traditional uh, looking uh, conference rooms. Um, so I, I think offices like this are are going to be ineffective going forward. There's a lot of there's a lot of these blue spaces, these individual assigned workspaces. Or if people are partly working from home and partly working from the office, a lot of them are going to be wasted. Um, so a, a more a more progress here's a so here's an image of a more progressive office solution. So <clears throat> in this one, private. Private office spaces are are reduced down to five percent of the total square footage. Um, it's reconfigured so that a lot of the spaces are are individual spaces or hot desk spaces. So again, work 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 spaces that that people can um, that alternately occupy. And then all the spaces in yellow are collaborative spaces. So they're places that people can you know I see somewhere people can sit on a couch or a small group of three can huddle around a video conference to uh, to talk to the team remotely. Um, you know, there's um in sort of the middle on the left side, there's a big cafe space, um, you know, to again provide that like social function at the office uh, where people can kind of come come together and meet when they need to, and then you know leave to one of the hot desk space or leave the offices completely, um, you know, when they need to, and 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 this kind of more varied uh office with different types of working spaces is 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 the office the type of office that i see going forward that that you th there are different types of spaces that are conducive to different types of work um individual workstations are 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 shared and minimized um uh, and and it's kind of more conducive to thinking of the office as a place that people appear at sometimes and um and uh, and can and have the option of working at and and can come to to fulfill those you know that's the, that synchronous communication that they need to um, but, and then also leave when they need to and and a space like this will will allow a lot more employees per 
per 25,000 uh, square feet. So, the, Sam, you know, I just have a, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question. Because of COVID, obviously, people are going to be more, like, skeptical of going back to the office and especially going back, like, in a closer space with more people. Don't you think there'll be less collaborative spaces rather than more? I, no, I think, no, because, well, it sort of assumes a few things, like, and again, this is really tough. If if you, some some organizations are, so like the architecture firm I just described where, where people are working as a, as a cohort. So they, you know, it's the same way schools are right now, that students are staying socially distanced, but, but the, the kind of general approach to the, you know, the pandemic that we're having in BC right now is that, as, as, is that you you sort of stay roughly within bubbles, right? So so a lot of or you know a lot of companies are are coming to work in cohorts where you know if you're say you know my my wife's a hardware engineer and she, and she goes she goes to her work they have a hardware team of about three people and they're in a cohort you know they're in a cohort together they're in a they're they're in a bubble together they 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 work with each other they take the appropriate precautions but they do work closely together and they they just simply have to be huddled around you know, physical hardware together to, to, to do their engineering work. Um, and, 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 you know, uh, and so they need a collaborative space to work. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, if you, if you're, a t if you're, if you're a type of person that works in front of a computer a lot and, and your organization or, or you just don't, aren't going to be within six feet of anyone until 2022, then, you know, it's possible, but I, I don't, I don't think it's going to mean that everyone's going to reorganize their offices in, in, in cubicles. There's just going to be a lot more plexiglass, I think, uh, in between people. I, 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 I don't know though. I'm not an office design expert, uh, but these are, these are just the kind of emerging trends that, that, that I'm seeing with the people that I work, work with. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, it's about it's about uh, almost quarter after six. So I'm just I'm just gonna give you guys um, like four four quick tips um, to um, to make uh, make for a video better video conferencing, and then I'll I'll just take quest questions for the for the rest of the presentation. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so, so these are quick. I, I'm just gonna give. I'm just gonna give these four tips. So, these are just things that you can do to to make yourself uh, uh, look and sound better on camera. You know, the reason for this, and and the reason why we we have Zoom calls at all, and we're not on all on the phone, is that you know over 50% of of communication is nonverbal. People's facial expressions, their their gestures, their um, their um, um you know, micro expressions and their hand gestures, like it, all of those things communicate imperceptively and they're incredibly important to, to perceive. So to, to be able to see and to hear people in, you know, uh, it, it is really, really important and it, and it helps with empathizing with, with your coworkers, if you can, if you can see them and you can hear them, and 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 uh, and you can see the rivulets of sweat dripping down their forehead. So here are my tips. So t tip one is is lighting. Um, this one's really simple. It's it, basically if if you're setting up if you're setting up for a video conference call, try to get the the brightest light in the room onto your face. And the best source of light is is an open window. So right now I'm I have I'm right beside a, a big window looking out into the smoky skies, and that's lighting my face in a nice bright even light. Um, and then, you know, I have the room lights in kind of filling in the rest of my detail. And then there's no light source behind me. This this uh, woman in the in the slide here, she has a bright window behind her and it makes her face look really dark and it's really hard to hard to see um, hard to see her facial expressions. Sandra, I saw you you have a window behind you too and, <laughs> and it kind of makes your face a little bit darker and it's a little bit harder to 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 see uh, to see it, like you scowling at me or, or, or whatever. So, you know, th this is an example. So this is what she looks like turned around in that room. Um, if the, if the window's right behind her monitor and, and, um, and it'll, you know, fill up your face and, and allow people to see your facial expression a lot better. Um, so I'm sure you can probably see the difference. Um, so yeah, you know, and, and just getting the lighting right, getting a nice, bright, even soft light on your face will do more for, for how you look on camera than any amount of money you'll spend on a, on a video, 
on an expensive webcam. Just the better your lighting is, to the 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 you know the, the worse your lighting is, the harder a camera and and the the encoding and decoding uh, of the video has to work in order to pull detail out of you. So if you can just get a nice bright light on your face, especially a nice uh, even light, that's that's the first and easiest thing you can do. Uh, item number two is to to raise your laptop and your camera up a little bit. Um, the idea there is to get to get the camera at eye level or a little bit above um, above eye level. It's um, it's just a little bit more uh, intuitive. Uh, it's it's more it it makes makes you look more how how you look when when you're viewed in person. And it's also just a little bit more flattering. Like I'm gonna put my, I've got my laptop up on on a stand, but if I if I put it down like this. Um, and, and you're kind of viewed right from the bottom. You, you get a lot of uh, you know double chins, and the bottom of your face looks a lot wider than than the top of your face. Um, so if you but if you bring it up on a stand and you're kind of shooting down from below, um, it, it just uh, helps you look um, just a little bit more natural. Uh, number three is um, just get some headphones. So, you know, I've got, and a lot of people have um, a headset with a microphone. Um, the microphone is is really helpful, but the most important thing is just getting some headphones on. If you can just chuck some earbuds in, um, and so then it'll use the microphone on your camera. That'll that'll make you sound a lot better. Uh, the reason being is that if you're if you're not on headphones, um, sound comes out of your laptop speakers and echoes in the room, and it and it comes back into the microphone um, at the same time that your voice goes into the microphone uh, and that produces echo. So um, so if you can just get yourself some earphones or just remember to put, put them in for your calls, um, that's going to make your calls a lot better. And and it and it works it works the best if everyone does it. If one or two people aren't doing it, the whole echoes are introduced into the whole system. So so that's a, that's a really easy one. And then if you can get a microphone along, well, then you're laughing. And then number four is to um, don't use Wi-Fi. Try to just try to plug in your internet. Um, Wi-Fi is good, but home Wi-Fi is often is often troublesome. Um, uh, Wi-Fi radios can be interrupted um, fairly often. Um, by anything from from microwaves to to TV towers um, to you know I don't know just moving to the wrong spot in your house or to electrical cables on the wall if you if you can find find a way to use to use plugged in internet just just get a cheap Ethernet cable and run it to your run it to your router and plug in um, you'll be surprised at at, at how much better it is. And again, if everyone on the call can manage to do that, that the likelihood that you'll have to have people repeat themselves or you'll have dropouts is much, much lower. Um, it's, it's a really simple solution that, uh, that, um, that not a lot of people take advantage of. So any, if you can, if you can get your team doing those four things, your, your meetings are going to be a lot less frustrating and, and run a lot more seamlessly. Yeah. So that's my presentation. Um, that's awesome. Those tips are great. Yeah, they're all free things that you can just <laughs> just do right now. So, well, are there some? That's a good segue. What are some unfree things that you would recommend people do? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think from an organizational point of view, if 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 you can, if you can afford to just buy, you know, buy. You know, if, if you if you you know if you're in control of ICT spending, if you can buy people proper laptops that have proper cameras in them, um, so everyone's not just using their home laptops, that that's a really big one. Um, you know, third-party webcams like like Logitech type webcams, they're they're okay. They they come with a lot of problems though. When they're some, they can sometimes be really fiddly. And 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 on any sort of laptop from the last few years, honestly, the cameras are quite good. Um, you know, I think people spend a lot of money on 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 like slightly better um, 
webcams, but but don't sort of do a lot of those fundamentals that I was talking about, and then the, the money's kind of wasted. But you can if you can if you can get people um, laptops, proper laptops, uh, you can get them headsets. Um, I think I think those are things that uh, that that can make things uh, a lot easier. And again, like if you invest in headsets that are meant to be worn worn all day, there's really high quality headsets that um, that people like telemarketers uh, use or, or recording engineers can use, and they're meant to sit on your ears. Air can breathe in and out of them, so you don't get that sweaty feeling. Um, mm-hmm. They you know they don't get that fatigue of having an earbud jabbed away in your ear. Um, you know all, all you have to do is spend an extra fifty bucks. And you can get a really nice uh, pair of headphones, or or um, uh, that that are really comfortable to to sit in all day long, and you won't notice it, and they'll sound amazing. I had a quick question. Um, so, how much do you think is on the employer to supply this versus the employee to get it on their own? Like, I, I assume, like across multiple organizations, just depending on the size of the company, that might vary, but. Do you think there's like a minimum employer should kind of be supplying or see, making sure that their employees have? I mean, I like from a philosophical point of view, like giving people good tools to do their work you hired them to do is like one of the easiest uh, investments you can make as a as a company, you know, you 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 pay your employees, you know, how much per year, how much per hour, but you, but you you know, and I've worked in places like this where they they can't even afford to get you a new laptop. You just get like a hand me down from from the old manager or something like that. Like it drives me crazy that that people will people will hire a software developer for you know 120k a year, but then but then won't give them won't uh, uh, give them. Uh, um, you know, like a a proper laptop to work with or a proper headset that'll cost you like they cost them what like two hundred extra dollars. I mean, I don't know. Uh, do are, do you, James, work for a talent marketplace, and are you using this as a way to try to get Stephen to <laughs> give you nicer gear? We're talking about that on Slack right now. <laughs> Slack, which is either synchronous or in asynchronous. Thank you very much. I took right. notes. Back uh, channel. Uh, I think specifically where I was coming from with that was I was on a contract working for um, uh, Earl's at the start of the year, kind of when the pandemic hit. And mm-hmm. um, the expectation of having all that stuff at home was like, a, it was kind of an expectation that everyone has like a second screen and a really good setup uh, until about the first week when we all started working from home. Uh, mm-hmm. And that was a pretty fast like uh, drop in, in product productivity just because like no one had the right tools to do the jobs they really need to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's sort of this thing, there's this thing called, um, that I'd written about recently in, in my email newsletter, uh, called the, the, um, like the, like, it's like the technology adoption J curve. Basically it's the idea that when, when a new situation or a new technology tool is, is adopted, um, there's, there's an immediate drop in productivity as people sort of scramble to figure out how to use it. But then as it becomes incorporated into a workflow, then then only after you sort of in this trough of confusion, do you sort of come out being more productive and, and effective than you were before. So, you know, that's something that, that, that happens to everyone, especially it happened in, in March and April. Like I just remember in maybe April, June, basically, everyone talking about how they just like couldn't stand to be on another zoom call or they were just going to like go crazy. Um, and it's because that, that fatigue really set in by then. And then, and then by now you're either used to it, um, or you're, or there's been like a small rebellion and, uh, and you, your organize your managers have been forced to use, uh, adopt better tools and processes. So you're just not constantly on zoom all the time. Um, and, you know that that that's what that's what I'm seeing anyway. But yeah, I mean, like to answer your question, James, like it's um like I absolutely think that 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 an easy thing they can do is just buy people the tools and like I don't know how much does how much do like project management tools cost like five dollars per person per per month or something like that. Like you know, it's just it's just like you you need to give people the tools that reflect their reality. That, that's what I think. Awesome, thank you. I was going to say for people working at home too, if your company does want to pay for the tools is make sure you get them to complete the government T2200 forms. You can write some of that stuff off. Hello, T2200. Quick T2200. Let's you, let you write off your workspace as well as yeah. supplies that the employer doesn't cover. 
yeah, and keep, oh my gosh, keep receipts. Um, the government loves documentation, yeah. and if you provide them that documentation, they will leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. So always help. Yes. That's a great tip. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else out in the, in the chat or anything else that's uh, on anyone's mind? I have one thing that came up that someone, I can't remember who it was, but they mentioned it to me the other day. So for like low frequency noises and that kind of stuff, is there anything around that can just kind of get rid of that uh, from your microphone, Sam, that you're aware of? Um, I've heard about this for people that live near trains and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, so are you talking about specifically somebody that is working at their house and there was a low frequency hum like on, on occasion or just yeah like kind of kind of that active sound canceling kind of stuff that works really well on headphones i don't know if that exists for mics or that's interesting yes yeah. uh so there's a few things a few sort of parts to that question like a, a few sort of technical and non-technical solutions like w one of the <laughs> If you're if you're working on a um, like if you're talking to someone remotely at a who's using a video conferencing hardware in a in a um, in an office, you can you can use audio digital signal processors to do what you're describing, which is noise cancellation or on a more simple way um, uh, restricting frequencies so that the only noise that comes through is frequencies that. Uh, are within the human vocal range. So human voices only um, uh, only work in a, in, in a, in a fairly small uh, bandwidth um, and stuff that's very deep bass or, or, or very high treble uh, is not necessary for the, for, the, um, for the understanding and perception of the human voice. So microphones that are meant for, the good quality mics that are meant for, for conferencing will already in hardware be designed to avoid um, low frequencies or high frequencies. Cool. Um, so again, that's just kind of a quality thing. Um, cheapy stuff won't, won't have that um, good quality stuff will. And then, and then that kind of stuff can be filtered out on, on the hardware and software level. And again, like, um, like um, good quality video conferencing software should, should have the, have some software audio processing that that pulls some of that out. Um, ho home equipment plugged into a laptop will never be as good as 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 purpose built hardware that's installed in meeting spaces. So that's just something to know. Yeah, cool. And I saw a couple things in the comments section pop up. Um, so Troy says Google Home has a feature, and Ian noted that uh, a couple different uh, headset brands that uh, that they he quite likes. Yeah, I, I have Plantronics right now, Ian, and um, yeah, they're they're fairly solid. Yeah, sweet. That's some nice tangible stuff for a home office that I know I'm currently about to build. Right Good. So <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah, with uh, with a little extra budget, thanks to James. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is great. Um, yeah, we can wrap up the recording and then we'll be, we'll be sharing some of this with, uh, Sam on, uh, marketing stuff for, for the future. Cause I think it, especially that, uh, those really tight, uh, four pieces of advice, I think that plays quite well for, uh, say LinkedIn. 